The next part in the process is going to be to glue the fingerboard on the neck and shape uh, that part of it um, and sort of get it ready for fitting etc. So this is the stage at which we choose how long the string length is going to be um, etc and start to do all the angles that are going to be needed for fitting it. So there's quite a lot of science goes into this bit. The other thing to note is that this really is kind of a crucial moment of the base. So if the neck isn't um, the correct length for the body, it's uh, probably not going to fit, uh, which is going to obviously give you a funny string length. The D could be in the wrong place, the notes are in the wrong place. This is actually a really important part to get right. And we'll look at when we're fitting it, the importance of how it goes in the base is crucial. But this, this stage, it's really preparing it and getting it ready for um, fitting basically. So we have here a selection of necks. Um, it's quite fun, it looks like they're going on a little journey following each other. And then um, you can see what we get is a head that's roughly carved. There's a lot of finishing goes on uh, with this. Um, but you, uh, you get a head that's uh, roughly carved and then obviously a neck that's you know very thick and everything's very wide and then a big chunk the bottom. That allows us to do exactly what we want to do, which is crucial, uh, I think. You know, you'll see what you've seen all the way along this process that we've been, um, you know, really taking care that everything is sort of individually done for these instruments. And this is, this is no different in this part of the process. So I've got down a few here to have a look at. Um, and you can see they're all very nice, nice wood. Um, and I was looking at the base and it's got um, you know, it's got fairly wide, wide grain maple. Um, it's got a nice figure in it. It doesn't look too, doesn't look mega, mega flamed at the moment, but as soon as you see the varnish process go on, that base is gonna look incredible. And in fact, having some of the light patches and stuff looks really nice. So uh, I would say that probably this one um, would probably suit the base the best. It's got a really nice flame through it. Um, and um, you know the next stage will be to glue the fingerboard on. So talking of fingerboards, there is a big difference between one fingerboard and another fingerboard. They might all look similar, but they are all very different. So this is a German made fingerboard. We only use these. Um, they are of the absolute best quality. You can get them from companies in India and stuff like that, but the, the quality is very poor. They bend all over the place. They're, they're not, you know, they're just not good at all. So we know that when we buy one of these fingerboards, it's going to be good for use. They're very expensive and very, very heavy, very dense. Um, and we know that they're, they are, you know, of the finest quality for, for, for the sort of things we want to produce. So these go on all of our instruments, uh, regardless of what type it is. Uh, and then this actually, interestingly, is a three-quarter size fingerboard, they call it. Um, and it's obviously, it's quite, still quite wide. Uh, but the idea is when you see, you'll see Jack sort of marking this up and fitting it, the, the actual, the measurements, what we try to do is make everything fairly narrow and comfortable. There's nothing worse than having a neck with a, you know, a great big stretch across the string. It's a great big chunky neck. So you'll see that, you know, everything's um, as heavy as it needs to be, but, um, but also, as ergonomic as possible. And that's the other thing about having a really weighty fingerboard like this. This is really strong, so that neck is not gonna bend. Uh, and it'll also be very nice for, for shaping, for um, to sort of put the scoop in there and to put the dip afterwards. So yeah, we'll see how we get on. Mm -hmm.